Lights. Camera. Review. Titanic is a 1996 TV adaptation based on the famous events. Titanic sets sail on her maiden voyage, carrying over thousands of passengers. None of them know of the dangers that await them when the ship hits an iceberg. Titanic has always been one of my favorite subjects. Since I was a kid, I have collected every book and media piece that I could find of the Titanic. A few years ago, I watched the 1996 adaptation. Production for the film was rushed, leaving in noticeable errors, but it made me realize something new. Sailing with a large cast, several individuals played real-life counterparts or as fictional characters of passengers on the ship. Titanic has always been a character film. Without the stories from the passengers, we wouldn't have films based on the Titanic. A few names to mention in this miniseries are Peter Gallagher, George C. Scott, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Eva Marie Saint, Tim Curry, and more as an assortment of characters. Most actors took the film seriously, while others overacted. I liked how certain characters were focused on, like Madeline Astor, played by Jan Mortel. Scott was wonderful in his portrayal of Captain Edward John Smith. His voice was too raspy in some sequences, but he conquered an emotional performance. Tim Curry plays the most despicable person I have ever seen on the screen. He even scared me with his ruthless acts. <laughs> his sinister performance in this film defines how great of an actor he is. In a hurry to release the TV film a year before James Cameron's blockbuster hit, it's evident that it was rushed. Robert Lieberman left in a plethora of errors and inaccuracies that Titanic fans, like myself, catch immediately. He didn't analyze statistics carefully and he misinterpreted famous characters. One storyline that I had mixed opinions about was Alice Cleaver's, played by Felicity Waterman. Here's where writers should have conducted more research. Cleaver's story is famous along with the fate of the Allison family. Filmmakers did not do this story justice. Everybody's story needs to be told from that fateful night, but not with fabricated material untrue to the person. Sets and wardrobe are a huge part of any Titanic film. Filmmakers did their research to match sets from the layout of the ship. As for visual effects, this production lacked them. This was the first time we see the Titanic splitting in two, and it's overshadowed by the weak special effects. The script was long and tedious, specifically in the first half. We're getting to know the characters and learning facts about the ship. One scene is very inappropriate and doesn't belong in the film at all. For anyone triggered by sexual assault, this scene is uncomfortable to watch. Like all Titanic films, the 1996 adaptation hits at your emotions. I didn't think it was going to do that based on the mixed reviews I saw. That is the point of all Titanic films. This film makes you understand how powerful this story is. I never thought about it before, but any Titanic film is all about making decisions. Titanic still lies at the bottom of the ocean floor as a mark in history that no ship is unsinkable. When watching any Titanic media, take a moment to remember all the lives that were lost. Honor the officers and engineers who worked until the very end. And remember the heroes. Never forget the Titanic. Do you have a favorite Titanic film or fun fact? April is also another significant month. It's Parkinson's Awareness Month. If you have not seen the underrated romance film Love and Other Drugs, watch it and tune in to my next review. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel or to my Patreon. My name is Marielle and this has been another one of my movie reviews.